What's up guys? This is the start of a series where I'll be explaining IQ's features and going over just about everything there is to it. In this specific video, I'm only going to go over the basics on navigating IQ. In the next few videos of the series, I'll go into more detail for every feature of IQ. So first off, if you don't even know what IQ is, it's the software that is used to control all of your Corsair devices. You can get IQ by going into the official Corsair website, hovering over support and pressing downloads. Then you'll see the first thing on the list is IQ. You can download and install it like any other program. You should have something that looks like this, where it shows all the devices you have connected. This is the home page of IQ, which you can see highlighted at the top of the IQ window. Over on the left, you have the profile window, which you can click to drop down and see a list of all available profiles. You can edit the name of a profile by double clicking it. When you select a device, you can begin to customize the current profile selected. You should see different options depending on the device. For the keyboard, there is actions, lighting effects, and performance. For the mouse, there are two additional sections called DPI and surface calibration. Let's go from top to bottom, starting with the actions tab. Here in actions, you can create macros to serve many different purposes. Click the plus sign next to the search bar to create a new action. At the bottom, you will now see three different settings titled record settings, advanced settings, and start settings. They might look overwhelming at first. I'll save explaining what all of this does for a future video coming soon. You can drop down the menu to see all the different types of actions that you can set up. You can map these actions to any key on the keyboard by simply selecting it. If you go over to this little hamburger button next to the search bar and drop it down, you should see a few more options. Duplicate action, save to library, and delete. Moving on to the lighting effects tab. It follows the same user interface. The little menu here still allows you to duplicate lighting, save to library, and delete with one additional option that allows you to view only the selected effect if you have more than one effect present. To create a new effect, simply press the plus button above the search bar. Now you will see all of the settings at the bottom depending on the effect you have selected. When you drop down the menu, there is a large variety of effects to choose from, each with their own set of settings. You've got predefined settings, you can create your own custom effects, which I'm gonna go really in depth on in the future. And there is lighting link that lets you link a predefined effect across all of your Corsair devices. A feature I'm sure most of you will be using is importing custom profiles you find on the internet. You can do this by going to the hamburger menu next to where it says profiles. Drop that down and you will see four options. The third option is to import or export a profile. You should see this menu at the bottom. Click the three dots to navigate for a .q profile or .q folder. Then I highly suggest you deselect everything except for actions and lighting effects before you press import. If you would like to export your own profile to share, click the export tab Use the drop down menu to select the profile you want to export, then use the checkboxes to choose the settings you want to export along with the profile, and hit the export button to save it. If you'd like to create a folder to store multiple profiles, you can do that by clicking the folder icon. Now you can drag any profiles you want into this folder. When you go to export it, make sure you select export all profiles in the same folder before hitting the export button. Finally for the keyboard, the last tab is the performance tab. Here you have a few more options that allow you to change your lock indicator colors, brightness indicator colors, and on the specific keyboard that I have, there is a profile indicator button as well. Now let's head over to the mouse and check out the DPI tab. Here you can edit your mouse DPI settings and also change the DPI indicator color for each level of DPI that you set. If you have a newer Corsair mouse like this Iron Claw, you can use the surface calibration tab to calibrate your mouse to a specific surface. An older mouse like the Saber won't have this option. If you own a Corsair headset, there is an EQ presets tab which is where you can make your own EQ settings. This is also present on the Corsair headset stand, which has its own built-in sound card. If you own a Corsair cooler, you'll see a performance tab that is different from the one present on the keyboard. Here you can adjust the speed of your fans and pump by using the presets or creating your own custom curves. There's also the graphing tab so you can see a graph of the RPM on your cooler. Similar situation going on if you own the Commander Pro or Lighting Node Pro. There's the performance tab and the graphing tab as well. But the important thing here is the lighting setup. This is where you set up what devices are currently connected onto your controller. It's very important that you set this up right to ensure proper operation of the lighting effects, which you can set up in the lighting channels. Now I'm going to go over to the top of the window and check out the dashboard. Hit the plus button and you'll see options for a variety of devices. Let's select my processor and graphics card as an example. Now you can see that IQ is giving me information for the temperature on all the cores of my processor and also for my graphics card. You can also view this information without having to open IQ by using IQ space. If you go down to your Windows taskbar, you can right click the IQ icon and select IQ space. Now you can press the plus button at the top and display the same information as shown in the dashboard. 
Finally, you have the IQ settings. Here you can see important settings for each of your devices. You can adjust polling rate, brightness, layout, and you can clear the device memory. But most importantly, this is where you update the firmware on your devices. At the bottom is the universal settings with four different tabs, general, OSD, dashboard, and sensor logging. Under general, you have option to change IQ's language, temperature units, and most importantly, this is where you check for the latest version of IQ, which I highly recommend you make sure to do if you want to use custom lighting profiles, because if I've made a profile on a newer version of IQ, you will not be able to import it in the older version. Over on the right, you've got some other stuff like debug logging, and SDK if you want to use that when you open up specific games like Far Cry. You can also uncheck the show only connected devices if you wish to demo devices you don't currently own. They will appear on the homepage. Next, there is OSD, which is used to overlay stuff when you're in a game. Then there is Dashboard. Here you can set a background image for the settings panel with multiple adjustments such as background fade and blur. Lastly, you've got sensor logging, which allows you to set up logs for your devices. A few other small things, if you go back to home and select the profile, you'll see at the bottom that you can link a profile to a specific program, so that profile will be selected when you start a game. Then you can pick a custom icon for that profile and a custom IQ background when that profile is selected. That about wraps up the introduction to IQ. As I said, this video isn't meant to go into too much detail. I'll cover more in future videos. If you enjoy my work, consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of the support from you guys has brightened up my life and I appreciate it so much. Thanks to everyone and I'll see you in the next part of the tutorial series.